everybody, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here today with a little video about how to use up scraps. Now, I've been doing this a while and I'm taking a class right now online where I am um, using a lot of watercolor and I've been cutting and saving my scraps. And I've been doing this for a while, so this is nothing new, but taking this class has just added watercolor bits a lot faster than I normally would. So I saved myself one of those envelopes that you put like die cut or die sets in and stuff and decided, well, geez, I've got so many of these. Why am I just letting them sit in the drawer? Let me put my scraps in here. So as you can see, there's watercolor on that, but backside, pretty good. So what I decided to do is to take the watercolor scraps and make things with them. I can't stand the thought of wasting watercolor paper because I was on Amazon this morning and boy howdy, that stuff is high. And if you like arches, well, you're gonna have to mortgage your house to get it. So let me show you what I've been up to. Here's some stuff that I've done like 15, 20 minutes ago. They're pretty dry. It's not, I'm not doing any shading or anything like that. I am just, look, <laughs> clean water dirty paper towel uh, you know you can only you can only make me be neat to a certain point all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some paint on my little brush here and really and truly I just picked a brush out of my can it's not anything exciting so I just make a circle you know I'm a doodler so this is this is something that should be so easy for everybody because there's really not a lot, of, a lot of rocket science involved in here. I'm just taking um, watercolor and I'm just making circles on here because they're easy. I'm not showing you the watercolor I'm using because I can't get everything in the screen. Ooh, that's a nice juicy bit. I have no idea what kind of paper it is. Like I said, it's just miscellaneous watercolor paper. Frankly, I don't really care what brand it is. I just want to paint on it. So I'm going to do little bumps so I can make a flower with petals and I don't care I'm butted up against the edge. This is not perfection. It's just going to be done, which I'm all about finish. Um, so I'm just going to do these little bumps to mimic petals on flowers. Let me spread this out a little bit more so I get color on the this way. So um, let me show you what I made while I was sitting here right before I turned the camera on. This is just, you know, a nondescript piece of leftover watercolor paper. I have a feeling this is Canson mixed media paper. I have run out of watercolor paper from Canson, so I'm using the mixed media Canson. So I just made a circle just like I did these. Then I took my black jelly roll pin and just trace stuff. You don't have to be a sketch artist to do this. All you have to do is get a pen and follow the paint lines. I mean, really, it is that simple. All right, so let me set this aside while it dries and I'll show you what I do. All right, so here's a blue. I think this one is ultra, no, is this is cerulean blue. Or maybe it's cobalt teal blue, I don't know. Anyway, all right, so I didn't do any of the little lumpy bumpies for petals. So what I'm gonna do is draw inside the circle. And yes, sometimes your jelly will skip on watercolor paper. So I just wipe it off on a paper towel and then pray it continues to work. Then I'm just going around with little bumps, little half circles, and try to stay inside the blue as best I can, but it doesn't really matter because I can't make it work everywhere. Then I'm just going inside and doing a smaller version of the one I did on the outside. Like I said, this is not rocket science. I don't do rocket science. I'm not that bright. Well, I don't mean it the way that sounded. <laughs> that sounded really bad. I'm not the rocket science type. 
And who knows, I really may not be that bright anyway. <laughs> All right, so that was dumb. All right, so I think I'm going to make it look kind of like this one. All right, focus, there you go. See, it's not anything fancy. Then I'm going to go inside here, draw another circle, just a freehand. If you really are into perfection, you can use one of these. I don't have time for that silliness. So you could lay this down on watercolor paper, except for your watercolor is going to seep underneath here. And I didn't really want it to do that. So I'm not using this. I'm just freehanding it because it was a way to kill some time and also a way to use up this paper to make things for my little books or to give away to friends. It really is that easy. I mean, you're watching me do it. It's not that stinking hard. And then I'll put a little black dot in the middle and color it in. And maybe I do I want to do anything else? Yes, I do. I just want to make little lines to go to the center. Every other one's a short one. I hope this comes out even, because if it doesn't, I'm a boob. Oh, good. <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> oh, yippee. All right, so there's that one. This one, um, I'm really going to have to draw, draw, draw inside because I went, I, I overestimated the surface. Not a problem. I'm just going to draw petals here. And it's done. I mean, I, now the... If you're a fussy cutter, you will really love doing this kind of stuff. I am not really that enthusiastic about fuddy, fussy cutting, but hey, you know, you do what you got to do. So I will gussy this up later. I'll cut these out. Let's see. I did the sun in anticipation of making a sun, so I did the yellow. So I'm going to just go around in a circle. I'm going to do the lines here for the rays of the sun. I'm just following the paint lines. Really, seriously, it's not that complicated. There's the sun. I'm going to do a little gussying up. And then, you know, just a few curved lines. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I did an even amount. Okay, so I can't do every one, every other one different because it won't come out right. So I'm going to do them all the same. You can use this. Or you can use uh, the Signo Uniball pens. It has a little harder time doing this. It is a finer line. This is a number eight. I like tens for the white, but I do like the finer lines for the black pens. And sometimes I will fill in with Posca, like uh, this one. This one has watercolor, and then if you can see, there's a difference in the color from here to here. I took a purple Posca pen and just went around the inside of all three of these, and what you see in the middle is the leftover watercolor. Oh, and I did take dots of white um, Posca pen and dotted it in the little things there. Really, no biggie. This is a good way to use up your stuff to make little things to put into your journals. Um, I'm trying not to use other people's artwork in my stuff so I don't have to worry about trademark issues or copyright issues and that mess. So, you know, that's why I do this. All right, I'm going to draw inside the line here. And then I'm just going to do little petals. I find this to be a challenge because I try to make them all the same, but inevitably... I'm squeezing one at the last minute because, you know, one's too fat and won't fit in with the rest. Now my pen is starting to skip, so let me wipe it off. There we go. 
you can do this with lots of different kinds of pens. You have to use one that you're comfortable with, and I happen to like the jelly pens. Ah, that one came out uh, exactly even. Well, I'll be. Tis my lucky day. All right, so I'm going to do this one. What do I want to do on this one? I don't know. This is all impromptu stuff. I never plan ahead. Well, I did plan ahead for the sun, but the rest of it is just kind of wah, 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 wah. You know, whatever strikes my fancy. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think I'll just do spikes because I don't have anything that has spikes on it. This will be a beast to cut out. Well, maybe it'll be easier than the round one because you just go in and snip the triangles. There we go. And then, what am I going to do on this one? I'll go around with a little circle on the inside. I'll make little hash marks inside. And they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be done. And maybe a little tenty thing in the inside. And this is very small, fine stuff here. I don't know if I can do it with this one or not. Because this makes a finer line. Oh, there you go. Because they're small little spikes. This, this is too thick. Because I made the spikes pretty small. There we go. You're only limited by your imagination on these because you could just do a million different kinds of things. I mean, look at these. They're all something just a wee bit different. And this is a good thing to use for your um, scraps. And look, see, I've cut some out. These are little tiny ones. And I'm going to show you what I'll do with these little ones in a minute. Hang on, let me go get uh, something I need for this. All right, so I got, I, sorry about the reflection of the camera. Well, it doesn't matter where I go, it's going to look bad. Anyway, I got gifted some brads. Now, some of these I had, and I've added another container like this with stuff that was gifted to me. And I do like these little tiny brads. So this is what I do with them. I take, let me move this water before I knock it over. I take the brads and I need a hole maker. Here we go. Where's my pokey tool? Take my pokey tool. I have this one and then I made this one to go on top of it. Whoa, where'd it go? Ooh. Okay, so that's the reason I dropped it. It's kind of small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pokey tool and poke through there. Oh, it's not centered. Oh, heck. Who cares? All right, so there we go. So I'm going to just leave that through there like that. And then I'm going to look for a little brad I like to put in here. I don't know. Do I want gold or silver? I don't think I want to do blue because this is already blue. I want you to be able to, well, no. Let's see, what are these? That's not the right kind of blue. All right, so let's not do those. Um. I think I'll do a yellow because, you know, that's the easiest one to figure out. So I have these little teeny brads, yellow, and I'll put it in the middle. Almost covers up the black I put in the middle of the smaller circle. There we go. I mean, you can spin it around, you can do all kinds, you can spin it till you get to the part where you really like it, where it's off center, or you can spin it around so it looks a little more rounded. Let me turn this way. Whatever makes your heart happy, you know? And then you could put tape, if you're going to put this on a piece of paper, it's not heavyweight paper. You might want to put a piece of scotch tape on here and then glue the whole back of this to put it down. Now, it's not going to rotate because you put tape over it and you've glued it, but 
You know, that cute little center. Who needs rotation? There's that one. And then I've got these two little itty bitty ones here that I'll use for something. But you're only a limited by your imagination. And if you don't have brads, it doesn't really matter. You have a Posca pen. Or you have an ink pen. Or you have a crayon of some sort. You have all kinds of stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to be expensive stuff. Um, let's see. How about this? This. These are Crayola Twistables, which I haven't used in a long time. But there's a nice yellow one in there. would be just fine. Whatever, whatever you have, use it. We spend, and I know the people in the craft industry would be like, oh my God, she's telling people not to buy stuff. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that while you have an inspiration, go get the things that you need. And if you're missing one thing to finish the project, buy and get what you need. But don't go out and buy a whole new tablet of watercolor paper. Don't go out and buy a whole new set of pens. That's, that's not what I'm advocating. Use what's on hand the time that you feel inspired. So let's see. Let me use this Posca. I'm going to put that in the middle for that little flower there. Uh, let's see what else do I want to do. Um, I think I might want to do a color inside the black there. I think I'm going to do a nice fat white. Well, do I have any fat white pens? Here we go. Have I used this one before? Yes. Okay. You know, I haven't used my Poscas in a while. All right. So, see... It doesn't have to be a brad. You can do this. And you can also try, let me find them. I rearranged my desk yesterday, so I'm a little, oh, I can't find things. Oh, here it is, right in front of me. Blah. You have any glossy accents? I'm just making sure it's not clogged up. Uh, let's see, where's this other stuff I made? Okay, so you have glossy accents and you have no brad. You can basically make something else like a brad. You put the yellow on there and put a nice fat drop of glossy accents on there. And three weeks later when it dries, <laughs> you come back and look at it. <laughs> Wait, where are you? There you go. I can't, if I roll it, it's going to go, but it's a nice big fat blob for the center of the flower. So just use what's within reach. The most important part of all of this is that you use your imagination. Don't limit yourself. And please, don't say, well, it doesn't look like so-and-so's. Who cares? Who cares? So it doesn't look like theirs. Maybe, you know... Yours will never look like theirs, so don't get excited. Your stuff doesn't look like XYZs. All right, I'm going to put a nice big fat one in here. Right in the middle, because you can see through it later. Oh, I just love using glossy accents. All right, so I did a nice fat blob on this one. You can see it's a little shiny there. There you go. Okay, so... I have something else I want to show you. Hang on one second. Okay, I finally found it. All right, so to show you these, these are made out of jelly printed photo paper. And yes, I used it on the glossy pot side. A lot of people poo poo the idea, but I got it to work and I did just fine with it. If you're not careful, it will stick, but you roll that paint on, you slap that print down and jerk it right back up that fast. So I've been making these for years. I think these are three or four years old. And honestly, nothing is very complicated about them at all. Just circles, lines, and dots. Okay, so we're not talking right, it's rocket science. Not my thing. So I, I did these, and I had so many of them. I'm like, well, what do I do with these things? I, you know, I need to do something with them. So, and this has been in a previous video, so some of you may have already seen these. Then I took my little creations, and I have a, a stamp that, I mean, a, you know, one of those things, punch, that punches these out. These are all little 
these are glued on top of here and I just drew the the stem and the flowers and then I had some little rhinestone-y looking bling stuff and put it on there. I made this in 2018. See, 2018. So I've been doing these a long time. This is 2018, May of 2018. I doodled the background, used a die cut to cut that out, and here's the circles that I drew and colored on the, on the jelly printed photo paper. I outlined everything in black Posca. I'm telling you, this is not rocket science. Here we go. Here's another one. Super duper easy to use, and it's your work. No trademark, no copyright things, unless you flat out copy somebody else's flowers, which you should not do. But there's this, and then this. I think uh, these are all dated May of 2018. I must have been on a binge, pro a project binge. <laughs> Yeah, May of 2018. These are all individual drawn leaves on the um, on the jelly printed photo paper, and then I just drew black Posca on the paper and cut them out. These are cut out now. The green is drawn on with a uh, Posca pen. The background is done on black cardstock with white. I don't know if it was a Signo pen or a white jelly, but either way, it was just scribbly on there. And this is the back of some other tag. Here's another one. I just drew little squares in the background, did this on, drew on the jelly prints, cut these out. Uh, are the leaves, uh, the stent, this is drawn onto the card itself. These two are glued on there. And then these little bitty ones, the leaves, let me hold these in my hand. The um, leaves are drawn on with a green Posca, but the heads of the flower are little tiny ones like these. See, I'm telling you, it's not that hard. So there's those. So this is a way you can use your own artwork that you're not beholden to somebody else to give them credit so on and so forth. It just circles, lines, and dots, and a little bit of pearl bling from Michaels. <laughs> That's probably, I think I have sheets and sheets of these that I think I probably had for about 10 years now. So why rush? All right, there you go. All right, guys, so there's my little video for today. I'm trying to make my videos come out every Tuesday. Um, I don't know if there will be a video... Let's see, there'll be a video maybe next week on Tuesday. Let me see how my day goes. I try to do them in advance because I forget. You know, I think, oh, I've got enough videos to last the month of XYZ. And then I look last night, I'm like, oh, I have nothing for this coming Tuesday. So had to get right hot on it. And I figured using, while I was doing this, I might as well make a video, right? Okay, guys, one more thing. Here's another one. This is from torn watercolor paper. See, look, torn. And there it is. So you can see how shiny they are. That's from the photo. Those are all, the heads of the flowers are all photo paper. The grass and the uh, stems and leaves are all drawn on with green Posca and outlined with a black jelly. It's really not that hard. Y'all try it. This is basic, 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 basic doodling. Okay, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please like, share, and subscribe. I don't say that very often. Um, I think what my next video might be is showing you guys things that is in, that are in my Etsy store that I would like to see sell and go bye-bye. Yeah, I'd like to see them sell and go bye-bye so I can make room for new things. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.